Hello. Hello, welcome to onlineenglishteacher.com. My name is Michael. Uh, a little bit about myself. I have been teaching English for roughly nine years, right? I have several certificates uh, teaching English, and I also have worked with very international companies teaching English in South America, in Asia, and many other parts of the world. Uh, so for this, for today's video lesson, we're going to focus on how to practice by yourself. Because something that I see with students is that uh, whether if you have a teacher working with you or whether you're practicing by yourself, many students don't know how to self-study when it comes to learning English, right? Maybe you guys focus too much on conversations or maybe you guys focus too much on, on speaking. You, spoke, you focus too much on, you know, uh, grammar. Right? You understand the grammar, but you don't know how to use the grammar, right? So uh, this video is to help you guys how to have an actual plan, right? To have a efficient study lesson by yourself, right? Uh, the reason for this is because I often see a lot of students, uh, either because they have a teacher or they don't have a teacher, they can't afford a teacher or they don't have access to a teacher. Uh, they usually uh, fall behind in their English, right? Because they're not practicing. It's very important that you practice English every single day, right? Just like the way you speak your language every single day, right? You have to practice using another language almost every single day, right? Because if you don't use it, you will lose it, right? So today's lesson will focus on how you should practice. So let's go on to the first slide. The first slide is how to self-study. Uh, Self-examination allows students to customize their learning, uh, their English learning experience to fit their personal needs, right? So what I have this lesson for you, you can customize it the way you want to, right? If you wanted to focus on grammar instead of listening, you can do that. But what this is for is mostly for uh, students who don't have like a structure for their uh, for their uh, self study, right? So your self studying can be flexible, right? And it's, it can be convenient. You can do it whenever you can, when whenever you have free time, right? Uh, so the self study should take one hour, but you can always separate it within the whole day, right? Maybe do twenty minutes of reading in the morning, uh, twenty minutes of listening in the evening, and then twenty minutes of conversation at night right so you can do it whenever you want but you should always just focus on one hour almost every single day of learning english okay it also allows students to learn on their own pace right like i said learn on your own pace and their preferred environment exactly okay so the first part of the self-study I'll make different customized self-studies in the future, but this is just the first and most basic one. The first exercise should focus on listening, right? Especially if you're a much more lower level, right? Or even if you're even at intermediate level, like to low to medium, you should focus on listening all the time, right? Uh, your listening exercise should be 20 minutes, right? From out of an hour, which is 60 minutes, right? So that's one third of your time. The extra slide should have you listen and watch anything for English for 20 minutes. So you're just listening and, and watching things in English, right? So it include things like podcasts, right? If you have a favorite podcast that you'd like to listen to, right? Uh, movies. Children's stories. This is very important. I would always recommend reading children's or watching and listening to children's stories or even, you know, uh, children's movies, anything from Pixar, from, uh, you know, uh, new animation studios, anything from uh, like a cartoon. I would recommend to watch those in English first because they're very entertaining. You know, they're also meant for adults, but as well as that the language is very simple, right? And you, you can always learn new languages or new words from uh, watching children's uh, uh, movies or reading or listening to stories, right? Another thing is watching YouTube videos. There's plenty of free resources, including my videos as well, 
uh, that can help you with listening in general. So when there's one website, actually two websites, actually it's one website and an application I would recommend. So let me switch here. So the first website is called ESL Lab. I'm gonna put these uh, links in the description so you guys can have access to them, right? Because I, I, uh, I really want you guys to learn, right? And I want you to just click on it and you have it, right? So I, I don't want it to make it harder for you. So the first website is called, let me switch over to it. Let me see, where is it? Nope, uh, right here. So the first website is called ESL slash, actually, yeah, slash labs.com. Like I said, I'll put this in the description. Uh, then you guys can just click on the link and have access to it, right? So this website is specifically for listening, right? So you have three types of uh, levels. You have easy, intermediate, and then difficult, right? So what you would do to navigate the listening, just go up on here to the top and let's go to easy, right? And easy can be very difficult for some students, but it's okay. We just want you to get in the habit of listening, right? We want you to practice listening. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Just as long as you listen, you'll be fine. So this, there's a list of all these listening exercises, right? I just chose a general listening, oh, acting school and movie stars. This is the one that I chose. So uh, let's say that we wanted to listen. So you can click here, right here, and it'll play the audio for you, right? And it'll tell you a story, right? And you're supposed to pay attention to what is happening in the story, right? Uh, what I usually do with my students is that I make them listen to it twice, and then they have questions that you can answer, right? Like maybe a person's name, uh, a location, right, uh, where they work or what they do, right? Just general information that you could, uh, that you're gonna hear in the story that you have to answer. So you can listen to this as many times as you want, right? Especially if it's very hard, if you have trouble with uh, listening, this can be very useful, yeah? Another thing that is useful about this website is that they also have the transcript or the, the listening script as well. So you can read, right? You can read the listening exercise, right? So this is all the audio, I mean, all the, what, this is everything that's in the listening exercise, well, what people are saying, right? So if you're having trouble understanding, what did that person say? You can click on the transcript or on the listening exercise, right? You're listening, uh, script and i'll tell you every single thing that the person is saying right and then you can always translate it in your language if you don't understand the word right and you could uh maybe read and listen at the same time right to help you uh follow the lesson much more easily yeah um another thing that i would recommend for listening and for reading this is an application on your phone there's an application on your phone. It's called Blinkist. I'll also put this down. I am not sponsored by Blinkist, but I would recommend uh, if you're an ESL uh, a learner to use Blinkist. Uh, so what it is, I'll show it on my phone and on here on the screen. Every single day they give you, and they have a free trial and a paid trial. I, if you can't afford it, I would recommend the free trial. You can always just stick to the free trial or the free uh, uh, application that they have. So let me see here. Where is Blinkist on my phone? So I even use Blinkist, right? Because it has a lot of interesting topics. So Blinkist usually gives you one audio book, like kind of like a short uh, story of an audio book a day, right? And every single day it's different, right? Like today it's about um, uh, helping migrants. And the day before was about, you know, the economy. And then the day before that was maybe investing your money, right? There are, it's mostly business oriented, but it's very, very uh, uh, useful if you want to practice your reading and listening. It's a very, very good app. So I recommend this application called Blinkist. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by them. 
uh, I just tell my students to use it because it's a very good app that, you know, if you want to practice your listening and for 15 minutes, right, this is a good app. Right. But it's not it's not a language learning app. This is like a self development app. OK, so this is not something to help you really learn English. It's not focused on learning English. It's just helping you. Uh, it's just giving you access to things that you can read and listen to uh, each day. That's new. OK. OK, so back to the PowerPoint. OK, so we're going to go towards, I think, reading. Yeah. So after you list, after you did your 15 minutes of uh, listening, now we're gonna go to 20 minutes of reading, right? So uh, what this exercise focuses, um, what the exercise focuses on is that you should read out loud, right? Speaking as you read, right? To help with punctuation, to help to expand vocabulary, right? So read out loud for 20 minutes. You can read anything, but remember to read something on your level, right? because uh, you don't wanna read something that is too hard for you because you won't understand, right? But always read something that you like as well, right? So make sure you pick topics that interest you because this will, can help you, this will help you expand your vocabulary and your pronunciation. So there's also another website that I would recommend for students uh, for reading. Uh, I know, understand because uh, being an ESL teacher, it can be very difficult for students to find reading material online because a lot of it's not free and it can be a challenge. Okay, and let me show you the two websites that I would recommend. So there's two websites. They're very similar, just they're free online material, right, to read. And the first one is the little the little prince in levels.com, right? And this is a story of the little prince. This is a very good story. Uh, many of the many of my students who have read the story with me really, really like it. It's a very good story, right? Uh, so we have three different levels. We have level one, level two, and level three. So level one is a much more lower level. Uh, level two is like intermediate level. And then level three is like high level, right? If you think you're very good at speaking and understanding English, I would recommend uh, level three. And even though this looks like a, it's look can look easy, there's a lot of words and a lot of phrases and a lot of ideas in this book that are very uh, complicated. Yeah, and it'll help. It actually will help expand your mind and expand your vocabulary. And uh, you know, you'll know you see things in a different way when you read this book. Many students like this book, so I would highly recommend this book, right? So it's a little prince in levels.com. I'll post this in the description as well. The second one is Robinson Crusoe in levels.com. So this is another uh, kind of like sort of a children's book. I would say it's more like a teenager's book, right? Uh, for uh, in America. So we also have the three levels again, right here. These are the three levels right here. Level one, level two, level three, right? Uh, you know, level one is for low levels, level two, intermediate, level three, higher levels, yeah? So uh, this one's a little bit more harder than The Little Prince. Uh, not so, uh, students also like this, this book as well, but I think The Little Prince is more um, like, uh, more fun. To read. This is also a fun read as well. It's a very interesting story. Very, very interesting story. And, um, but I think a lot of people like The Little Prince more than uh, Robinson Crusoe, but they're, very, they're both very good books. I will also put this one in the description below. And then finally, going back to our PowerPoint, I think we have conversations if i can find my powerpoint here we are so the last one 20 minutes right 20 to zero, 20 minutes of speaking right you might be thinking well i just spoke out loud while reading the text yeah but this is a little bit different right um what you were doing is that you're kind of reading text out loud uh something that you saw and then you just repeat it right speaking is like you have to think and then the words have to come out 
of your mouth, right? So for this speaking exercise, it's also 20 minutes, will be one hour in total of all the 20 minutes, the three 20 minutes would make one hour, yeah? And you do this either speaking to yourself or having a pretend conversation with yourself, right? This can include introductions, ordering food, asking for directions, etc. Another website I would recommend for this as well is, let's see, where are we? Come on, I think I need to, oh, here we go. Another website I would recommend for this is called eslconversationquestions.com. Just like the listening uh, website, we have a lot of topics that we can choose from, right? You know, like golf, hobbies, getting a job, games, the future, right? Holidays, homes, right? You have a lot of topics that you can choose from, right? It goes all the way down, all right? So let's pick, let's say, let's pick a good one. Like, not dreaming, let's see here, like cooking, right? So this website will have a list of uh, questions that you can answer, right? For example, how often do you cook, right? And then let's say I'm the student, let's say, how often do you cook? And then I can answer, oh, I cook maybe two to three times a week, right? And I usually cook rice, beans, and meat, right? And sometimes like they have a little bit of uh, uh, juice, and sometimes like they have soda when I, when I eat with my meal, right? So that's how you would answer it. And then you go down to the next one. How good are you at cooking? You can say, I am okay at cooking. I wish I can cook better. I would love to learn to cook maybe Thai food, Indian food, and Japanese food. Those are very delicious cuisines that I would like to learn to cook. Um, maybe I will start watching YouTube videos online on how to cook these foods, right? So you can just go down these lists. There's many of them. And I would recommend to go down the list and answer them, right? Another thing I would recommend too is to record yourself. You can usually record yourself on your phone and say, oh, this is how, uh, when you're answering these questions, you can say, oh, this is what I like to eat. This is what I cook, yada, yada, yada. And it will help you uh, to kind of, kind of document your, your, your ability to speak, right? And you wanna keep track of your speaking ability because the more you practice, the better that you're gonna get. But as well, you wanna make sure that you're not making any mistakes as well. Okay, what else? I think there was something else. This is, okay, so let me cover a little bit this. I think I went too fast on ESL Labs. So ESL Labs is very similar to uh, like the ESLconversationquestions.com. So ESL Lab has a list right here, many listening exercises, right? Of things you can listen to, right? And they're, some of them are very easy. Some of them are very hard, right? I would recommend to choose randomly, right? Just randomly. Choose randomly of something that can interest you, right? And then you can always read the transcript right here in this blue part, or you go down, right? You go down and you can listen to the audio as many times as you want. And then I would recommend to answer the questions. And then after listening and answering the questions, I would recommend to read the transcript to see any words that you don't know and to write down those words on a notebook and then maybe translate it in your language as well make a sentence with that word, right? So I think that's pretty much it for today. I would like to do more of this in the future. So if you guys like this a lot, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. That would really, really help. We're only, I think, 120 students away from 1,000 subscribers, please. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, you know, tell your friends, share the video. Um, remember to practice English every single day and remember, take care and bye-bye.